Hey guys, RT Hill here, Top Velocity Physical Therapist, and I want to take you through some of the uh, some of the the dynamics, the anatomy, and, and ways that we can possibly address thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, if you read the article, I mentioned that there's three different areas where we tend to get this entrapment of the nerves and the the vascular system as it runs from the neck down into the arm. The first place we want to address is the scalene muscles. Now, there's three of them. You have the anterior, the middle, and the posterior scalene. The two big ones that we're going to focus on with thoracic outlet are the anterior and the middle muscles, okay? They run from the cervical spine and connect to the first rib. What will happen is if these muscles get tight or they get hypertrophied, they compress the amount of space that your brachial plexus has as it leaves your cervical spine, travels underneath your collarbone and comes into the arm. Leads to things like a, a numbness or a tingling feeling, weakness in the muscle, early fatigue, stuff like that. So what I want to teach you is a couple of the basic ways that we can release some of that muscle and stretch it out. First thing we got to do is locate where the, where the scalenes are. So to do this, turn your head to the side, put a little bit of pressure on it, and you'll notice this muscle pops out right here. That's your SCM. Just underneath that is where your scalenes are located. Okay, so you drop off of that down in your clavicle and you run up into the spine here. What you'll feel are some vertical fibers through there. Those are your scalenes. If you feel like you're, you're pressing uh, too hard, you're getting numbness tingling, hold off. If you feel a pulse, you're not in the right area, you need to reset and try and find those actual fibers that if you move your head side to side, you'll feel them stretching and lengthening underneath your fingers right there. So the first thing I like to do, just put a little bit of compression on it. Now because the scalenes are accessory, accessory respiratory muscles, all you have to do to activate them is to take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and then exhale. Deep breath in, breath out. Switch to another area of the fibers, put a little compression on it, breathing in, breathing out. Do this 10, 15 times, then you're going to move into a little bit of a stretch. Simple way to do that, keep that pressure on the, on the neck there, and just move to the side. Okay. You'll feel that muscle again, it'll elongate underneath your, underneath your fingers. Keep that tension on there. You want to try and really try and press those fibers out, stretch them out. Hold a stretch for only 30 seconds to two minutes till you feel something release. Or if you're going to do it multiple times, 30 seconds, shoot for about three to four times. Okay? Now as I mentioned, these muscles, they attach to the first rib. So think about it, if those muscles tighten, okay, you continue to, to strain them and put stress on them, they'll contract in, or if they get shortened by something like bad posture, forward head, rounded shoulders, it pulls up on that first rib. When that first rib pulls up, again, it compresses the, the space between the first rib and the clavicle, which is the second part, if you'll remember from the article, where you can get this compression of the nerves and the the artery and the vein as they run through that area. So a great thing to do is to try and do a first rib release. Easy way to do that. Grab yourself a towel, a, uh, a belt. This is a firm piece of, of sport cord. It's not going to give a whole lot, right? So you just get in there onto that, that portion of the neck and you're going to get the, the posterior portion of the first rib there is really what you can kind of get to. Hold on to it pretty tight there. Tilt the head to the right so you shorten those scalene muscles, right? You're trying to put them on lax so that you can get down all the way to the first rib. And start with the easy breathing again. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. 10, 15 times, then start adding in some range of motion. Try and pick that shoulder up, coming down. Coming up, coming down. What that first rib's trying to do is to elevate, and what you're doing with this here is you're keeping that relative uh, depression onto it. So you create that space, that gapping, as the, scat or the clavicle pulls forward, first rib comes down, and you create this space. Okay. If that gets easy for you, and you, don't feel, and you don't feel like you're getting much of a compression to there, you're not getting much of a stretch, take a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, something that's got some firmness to it. Get in that same kind of area, okay? Put a little compression in there, breathing in, breathing out, head tilted, start getting into those overhead motions. I like this more than using the belt because you can avoid trapping that clavicle right there, right? You can get right behind it and really go through the range without impeding 
that clavicle's ability to rotate up and elevate whenever you are doing this overhead motion. So, I mentioned a couple reasons why the scalenes can, can get tight on you. Could be because of poor posture, could be because of repetitive strain on the scalenes. Let's address posture right quick. We've all seen those people that have this rounded shoulders, head kind of comes forward. They lose that natural curve in the cervical spine. Problem with that is it shortens everything here. It promotes this anterior flexion, fetal position kind of posture where everything in the back gets elongated and overstretched, destabilized. Everything in the front tends to get tightened in, okay, and compressed. So, some basic postural things to look for. If you're looking to the side and your head's out here, think about drawing that neck back. Drawing it back, you're not looking up, you're not coming down forward, but you're pulling that neck back into this position where you're trying to establish or reestablish that lordotic curve in the cervical spine. Very important that you do this, and if you get to where you can do this and you're not having any trouble with that, lay down on a bench. Lay in flat to where gravity's kind of pulling you down, and you're coming up against that motion. Simple postural exercise, but it'll take you a long way in terms of getting this more upright, more open position, which is where you want to be. Think about it in a, in a pitching cycle, how much elongation, how much openness you need to go through that cycle. Next simple one that I like to do, take your thumbs, pull them against each other. If they weren't connected, I'd be pulling out here. Get to this position here, pulling up overhead, okay, palms together, and then coming straight down with a little bit of horizontal abduction, so that opening of the chest again. 15, 20 of these, okay? You're just trying to establish that, that postural kinetic pattern that helps to open everything up for the spine, okay? Last one that I want you to look into, take you a piece of sport cord. This one's probably a little bit heavy, but what you're looking to do, palms here, coming down, and you're squeezing the back of your spine together, those lower portions of your shoulder blade. Think about this left one coming to your back right pocket, this right one coming to your back left pocket. Again, we're opening everything up and we're stabilizing in that position, that nice, upright, good posture. Come in here, open it up, hold three to five seconds. Three, two, one, up again. Down, three, two, one. 15, 20 repetitions. Try and do two, three sets of them at a time. So that addresses the scalene, part of the first rib. Next thing we'll end up moving into is this fascial system in the, in the pectoral clavicle region. And then we'll get into some, some stabilization of the scapula, all right?